Hi everyone, today's recording is more on target control in fusion pumps. I'll include here the link of the prior video that will tell you a little bit of the basic setup of the pump and how to put it all together to start with. What we're going to cover today is really just how to do the induction. I've heard from quite a few people that they're having trouble with is the initial bolus. Um, they're just not comfortable letting that go out of their hands and out of their control, which I can understand. In anesthesia, we all like to have control. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about how you actively do the induction and then give some examples on how to do a nice slow titrated induction for an unstable patient and one where you want to do it a little bit more fast for a healthy patient um, and a possible rapid sequent induction. Our first slide here. How do we induce anesthesia with a TCI pump? So you will pick your target plasma concentration and you will pick a target plasma concentration that is higher than the eventual central or effect compartment value that you will want on that patient. As you track your induction, you will look at the central compartment value and correlate that with your conscious level and your central monitoring, your entropy or your set line. And then you will dial your plasma concentration back to match that ideal uh, effect compartment. So what plasma target value should you pick? So you're going to pick based on where you want your effect compartment to be and how fast you want to get there. So in younger patients, we'll probably pick a number between four and six. In older patients, a value between about two and three. In a very comorbid patient, we might actually go really low and then very slowly titrate up. So what are the things that we track in terms of central compartment or effect compartment levels? So I look uh, usually um, for a loss of verbal and we usually see that around one. Usually at around 1.5, they'll tolerate back mass ventilation. And at two, you will have anesthesia. For these, this is sort of for my cohort of patients, more the older patient. And then you will adjust that um, based on stimulation. For younger patients, these numbers will be bigger, um, probably around three or four, sometimes five. And that's why it's important to use your central monitoring. So you, especially if you have a paralyzed patient, so you have some sense of um, what's happening during stimulation. So here is how uh, I do the induction. So as you can see in this video here, the effect compartment is currently at zero. The target uh, plasma concentration is set at three. And we, we have started the induction because we're starting to catch up here. Um, and the actual plasma concentration or predicted actual plasma concentration is starting to climb up. But we haven't seen anything on the effect compartment yet. So let's start playing this. The timer here is going to track for when we start induction until we reach that value of about one to track the time from start of induction until we think we have loss of verbal. So this is our initial set line. You can see the um, number of 93, which is uh, quite an awake patient. So at this point now, we've achieved a plasma and a plasma concentration that we think is at target. And we're starting to slowly see the effect compartment um, catch up. So at about one minute and 27 seconds there, we now have an effect compartment of one, which is where we want to be for loss of verbal. So we'll check in with our patient. Uh, we'll check our set line and our entropy and see um, what that's looking at. And here we can see slowly we're starting to see that nice green color and our number is starting to drift down. And this is a patient who is uh, slowly entering that level of uh, sedation, um, loss of verbal and anesthesia. Now I'm going to start dial dialing down my plasma target in this elderly patient because I don't want to overshoot and over anesthetize this patient. Our effect compartment will still slowly uh, keep rising to that level of two. 
Here we can see our uh, nice blue color appearing, the slower frequency waves, and our number is still going down. So we have a number of around, still 86, but you can definitely see the color spectrum there is changing as the brain waves are going more to the slower frequencies. We are now at three minutes. A very nice uh, spectrum of color happening there, even though our number is still static at 82. And now at three minutes and 30, we're definitely seeing a very anesthetized patient. You can look at that set line spectrum here. Uh, number is going down into the 60s. Color spectrum is very blue. And we're now at a central compartment of 1.7. And that's a number where I'd be pretty happy leaving this patient for the initial part of the anesthetic until the surgery starts. Still continuing to drop on the uh, integrated number um, and the color spectrum is stabilizing so we would probably at this point turn down our target plasma now down to in the 50s so definitely an anesthetized patient So we've turned down our target plasma to 1.7 and stabilized the patient there. But that took a very long time. Uh, we're, we're looking at about 3 minutes and 35 seconds until our patient was actually really asleep. Now what do, how do we get that happening a little bit faster? Um, there's definitely younger patients who can tolerate a faster induction. We'd actually want them to go to higher numbers too, so this seems like a very slow way of doing it. Now what you can do is firstly get it started a little bit earlier. That first little run up to the one takes a long time uh, for us to lose that verbal before we can really start giving muscle relaxants and um, start the back mask inhalation part of our anesthetic. So we want to get there much quicker. So what you can do is when your patient comes into the room, get your propofol infusion started, set your plasma target at one, and, and get it started while you put all your monitors on, you're doing your pre-oxygenation and slowly drift into that sort of sedation stage. Of course, if you have a patient with a critical full stomach or a critical airway, this is not something you will be doing. We're talking here more about standard sort of safe patients. You would also set your plasma target concentration much higher. So this is what that will look like. So on this patient, you can see we've, we've we pre-started the induction. So we're already at 0.4. Um, central or effect compartment and now we've set our plasma target concentration at five so we're going to go up much faster to that uh, one central compartment or fed compartment level where we where we're timing to you can see your timer running again there we're at sort of 28 seconds there now and uh, already up to 0.5 and the closer you can get to that 0 0.8 0 0.7.8 before you actually start your your main induction, of course, the quicker this this part will happen. So there we are now at 58, sec 58 seconds. You can see our effect compartment is now at 1.1. And now I'm going to come down to three, which is sort of where I want to be on this patient eventually. The effect compartment will slowly catch up. Patient has lost verbal. Um, and it, that's a much quicker approach than our first induction. Of course, if you want that CE, the central or effect compartment to go even uh, quicker to that higher level, uh, you don't dial down at this point. You just continue to rise until you get to the point where you're comfortable, that you're happy to intubate, and then you dial back. So. In summary, to get to a more rapid effect compartment, strategies are to pre-start your propofol at a low-ish dose, like one, um, and get some baseline levels. And then to set your CPT, or your target plasma concentration, at a much higher level 
then you would actually want your effect compartment to be and then dial it back appropriately. So uh, depending on how rapid you want this induction to be and how, how high you want to go, uh, you'll dial back sooner rather than later. Uh, so I hope you have fun playing with TCIs. Um, I personally love the kind of anesthetic that I can do with these. It's so controlled and you know exactly where you are at all times. So.